There's been some major innovations in PC gaming since the time when I built my first gaming desktop. Back then, gaming laptops weren't really a thing, and they still don't let you do that much gaming on the go, because if your laptop has a discrete graphics card and that thing starts revving up to full power, then you're going to be lucky if the battery in your laptop lasts you a whole hour. But the Steam Deck pretty much revolutionized portable gaming. It wasn't the first handheld gaming PC, there were many that came before it, but the Steam Deck managed to break its way into the mainstream market at a price that people could realistically afford. And now other vendors are copying the Steam Deck in order to create their own portable gaming hardware. Lenovo has a lineup of portable gaming consoles called the Legion Go, and we'll actually be looking at the Legion Go S today in a comparison between a white one that's running Windows 11 and a black one that's running SteamOS. Both of these consoles have identical hardware on the inside, they're just different colors, but no surprise, the black one is faster and the battery has better endurance. This is because SteamOS, being a Linux distro centered around gaming, has a lot less bloat than modern Windows 11. There's a meme that I've seen in different software dev communities about how the recommended section in the start menu of Windows 11 is actually a React Native app now. If you spam your Windows key to open and close that menu multiple times, you can watch as the process eats up all of your available RAM in the task manager. It's already bad enough that something as simple as the start menu in your OS isn't just a small C or C++ program like you get with literally every Linux desktop environment, but Microsoft already had their own frameworks, okay? Let that sink in. They could have used WinUI for this. They could have used .NET. They could have resurrected Microsoft Silverlight for laughs and giggles, but no. Instead, Microsoft decided to use Meta's bloated JavaScript bullshit in their own operating system for some ungodly reason, I'm sure. It was probably some backroom deal that Meta had with Microsoft. Uh, but anyway, of course you have ads and AI that are shoehorned into Windows, just using your CPU cycles against you to abuse your digital privacy. And all of that bloat really starts to add up. It results in fewer frames per second in your games and fewer minutes of battery life before you're running to grab a charger before you lose your saved progress. So going through these games that Dave2D tested on these devices, all of which are very popular AAA titles, by the way, okay? These are the kind of games that people used to say that, oh, I need to use Windows or a console to play them because they just don't work at all in Linux. Well, now not only do they work, we're actually getting better performance. So Cyberpunk gets 59 FPS in the Legion Go S that's running SteamOS, and it only gets 46 FPS in the one that's running Windows. By the way, for those of you that just don't know much about gaming or frames per second in general, uh, 60 FPS is generally considered the bare minimum for a game running decently on any given piece of hardware. So Cyberpunk is basically just barely runnable in a nice way on the Legion Go S, assuming you use SteamOS, but if you're using the Windows version, then you basically get a slideshow. Uh, Helldivers 2. It's 70 FPS on SteamOS, and it only gets 65 FPS on Windows. Doom Eternal, 75 FPS on SteamOS, 66 on Windows. Spider-Man 2 gets 63 FPS on SteamOS and 64 on Windows. So this is the only example here where you actually get better performance on Windows. Granted, it's only a one FPS difference, so probably not even something that the person playing the game is going to notice. Definitely not the same case that we have with Cyberpunk or some of these other games here. And finally, Witcher 3 gets 76 FPS on SteamOS and only 66 on Windows. Now, the most embarrassing part about this chart is the fact that none of these games are actually natively supported on Linux. So this is the big hurdle that has made Windows the go-to OS for PC gamers for so long. Game developers almost never target Linux specifically, and they probably never will, at least not in our lifetimes, because they know that 
it's only a small percentage of people that are even using desktop Linux at all, right? I mean, Linux might technically be the most used OS in the world, but it's mostly because it's servers running it, right? Very few people run Linux on the desktop, and then only a small percentage of those desktop Linux users are also trying to play games on Linux. The same logic applies to game devs not supporting Macs, because even though Apple commands a much larger desktop market share compared to Linux and has a multi-trillion dollar company behind it, there's just not enough Mac gamers out there for game developers to go through the effort of making their game work on a Mac. So. To play these games, and most of the Steam library for that matter, on Linux, you have to use Proton, which is a compatibility layer that translates the Windows API calls that are being made in the game code to Linux compatible ones on the fly. It's basically an optimized version of Wine for video games. So even though there's this extra layer of code compatibility that in theory and also in reality creates a bottleneck for gaming performance, that bottleneck that's being created by the API translation layer still isn't as narrow as the one created by all of the garbage that is built up in Windows over the years. Dave2D's video title is perfect for this. Windows really was the problem all along when it came to gaming performance, especially if you were playing games through the Windows 7 era into Windows 10 and then into Windows 11. I mean, we've seen how this operating system has degraded with time. Windows 7 was great, but it's not supported anymore. So you pretty much have to deal with spyware now if you want to use Windows in current year. And I can't think of any cleaner of a gaming performance comparison other than this, other than to just test more games between these two devices that literally have the same hardware under the hood, there's only a software difference. So the old excuse of not using Linux because you're a pro gamer that needs to have the highest FPS to maintain your hecking kill streak in your rank, that excuse is not just fading away, but it's actually being reversed, okay? The base penguin has played an Uno reverse card because better gaming performance is now another reason to use Linux. I've heard that Microsoft is working on a portable Xbox that might run some version of Windows that's optimized for games. Now, who knows whether or not this version of Windows is going to be available to desktop users who might want to get a truly enhanced gaming experience. I doubt it because, of course, Microsoft wants to force you to buy more crap you don't need. But anyway, when this portable Xbox whatever comes out, I guess there's a chance that Microsoft could try to clap back with better gaming performance on the portable consoles. But I think once we get enough gamers that are actually competent computer users to get comfortable on Linux and realize the freedom, privacy, and cost savings that they're all getting, they won't ever want to touch Windows again, even with a 10-foot pole. Now, so far we talked about gaming performance, but let's talk about battery life power management, because obviously that matters a lot in handheld systems. Linux blew Windows out of the water in every game tested, sometimes offering more than double the gaming time on battery between these two consoles. And the Steam Deck, with its even better power efficiency, actually pushed the envelope further. So if you're a parent that might want to get one of these consoles for your kid because you figure they'll get more out of this than a Nintendo Switch or a gaming tablet or a console, and if the Linux model is giving you better battery life for the same price, well, that's an easy decision. That's an extra two and a half hours that your kid is gonna stay content on a long flight or a road trip or when you have to wait at the DMV and you couldn't find a sitter for them. So not only, is free software bringing people the peace of privacy and digital freedom? But now it's bringing overworked parents some extra peace and quiet. So regardless of which vendor you go with, get one of these portable consoles that runs Linux. Only play games that work on Linux because any game that's gonna force you to use bloated spyware AI botnet that is Windows 11 isn't even worth playing.